Welcome back to Trending. Here to talk sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limora Blockman. Hi, Limora. Hi, Thanks for my being dear. here. Thank you. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the role of the kissing plays. Yes, you know, in the core relationships. relationships. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting because we think about it, kissing is a very big factor in finding the one. And, you know, many studies were conducted to really assess this. Mm -hmm. What is going on there? So one of these studies actually gathered males and females and put them in an international questionnaire kind of online um, through a, a period of time mm -hmm. and asked them uh, really the question, what do you find in, you know, when it comes to kissing in terms of finding the one? Is it influencing your the choosing the one? How frequently do you kiss? Does it affect your relationship? Other questions like that. Mm -hmm. And what they found were a few, find, a few uh, results. One of them was obviously the women put more emphasis on kissing yeah. in the beginning and later. But they did find that both genders found that uh, or assessed that the frequency of their kissing was uh, correlated with the, um, with the strength of the relationship mm -hmm. and the longevity of it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, better, more kissing, longer relationship, and more resilient, huh. which is very interesting. But what about over time? Because everyone says, you know, the honeymoon phase is right. when it all happens, yes. and when you're so in love, and it's yes. all new. Yes. What about couples in long relationships? Yeah, so this, this was one of the results. They found that actually the couples that made sure to kiss passionately over time uh -huh. maintained their relationship better, and they had a better satisfaction of relationship. Hmm. But the researchers didn't stop there, and they actually took interest in the fact that women um, stated that uh, kissing, or at least first kiss and the beginning of relationship, actually uh, gave them an information, some form of inf information regarding the one. Hmm. Is this the one? Yeah. And then they went on and um, tested women while they were ovulating. Closer oh. to conception, yes. Okay. They asked them to really give information in regards to how important is kissing, and they found out that actually women that were close to conception um, assessed uh, a very big part of, of uh, their attraction to their partner, to the potential partner, in kissing. In That's other words... That's so wild. Nature is in the works. Yes. <laughs> in, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The genes that the uh, potential partner carried were very important, and it didn't stop there. These women actually were given a few t-shirts off the backs of sweaty men uh -huh. and they were asked to uh, choose the ones that uh, smelled good to them. The ones that were ovulating and weren't on, um, on birth control pills, which actually imitate you know, pregnancy yeah. and weren't putting them in, in search of a mate, mm -hmm. the ones that were ovulating actually chose t-shirts that were, they carried a scent that was very different from their own scent or relatives of theirs. Huh. Meaning, yeah, that this was an indication for a better immune system for offspring. That's so interesting because you've heard of the study in reverse that yeah. men find uh, t-shirts with women's sweat who are ovulating more attractive exactly. than who aren't ovulating. So it's it's in reverse the it, same. Right, it's correlated. It's yeah. the same thing, exactly. Wow. And actually nature is doing it for us. That's but so I want to, yeah, it's, it's very interesting and I want to say something in regards to kissing in general. You know, kissing releases a bunch of neurotransmitters that actually make us feel good, like, you know, dopamine mm -hmm. and, or, um, and, and uh, serotonin and oxytocin, but also uh, testosterone, which helps us, you know, pump our sex drive. So that's always a good thing. But I want to say the relational compatibility is actually something that is acquired. In other words, you don't find your soulmate, you actually make the man that you are with your soulmate. So mm -hmm. it's a process that you mm -hmm. kind of find a way into. And I want to say that um, choosing the one is not, I don't believe in working through a list. You know, tall, dark, and handsome sounds very right. good. <laughs> but don't work through a list because surprising yourself is a good thing. For instance, my husband is perfect. You are, baby. Aww. But, <laughs> well, so is mine. But, yes. We only have to talk about how perfect they are. <laughs> True. But the thing is, he was never, you know, he wasn't something that I assumed that I needed. He yeah. wasn't, didn't have the characteristics that I assumed that I needed. So just surprise yeah, what is yourself. This whole, what is your type? Yeah, uh, these, these things are really yeah. not relevant, and you need to really trust your instinct and your nose, for that matter. Yeah, and, and <laughs> so, so then can a bad kiss make or break it, or you think it's up Absolutely. to you to work on it? Yeah. Well, well you know, in, I believe that there is an indication, as they found genetically, that if someone in the beginning doesn't, you know, it doesn't work well, something about it doesn't really you know, uh, go well, mm -hmm. there is an indication that maybe something is not right, but I suggest, you know, just test it. 
Yeah. Take it to the test. Just test it. So, <laughs> so if somebody, if, if you find someone a bad kisser from the get-go. Yeah, you know, it is something that, as I said, relational compatibility is acquired and you can actually work on it. But I think kissing is an indication for some form of a connection yeah. between two people. Yeah. So, you know, just try, go, go and try. Just go and try. <laughs> yeah. Good advice. Thank you so much, uh, Thank Dr. Moore Blockman, for this. And staying on the topic of sexuality, actress and beauty of the Beast star Emma Watson came under fire this weekend for posing in the latest issue of Vanity Fair and bearing part of her breasts. Critics say the move isn't feminist. Here's Watson's response. It just always reveals to me what a mis how many misconceptions and what a misunderstanding that there is of what feminism is. Feminism is about giving women choice. Feminism is not a stick with which to beat other women with. It's 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 about it's about freedom. It's about liberation. It's not it's about equality. It's not I really don't know what my tits have to do with it. I just want to I just want to throw this at you. Um, what's your response to that? Uh, is she right that women just is. have the freedom to do yeah. whatever they want and to I choose? I do think she's very right, and there's actually hist historical uh, support to it. There's something called Anna Sirma that women in the you know in in, in history used to do. Anna is uh, lift and Sirma mm -hmm. is skirt. They used to expose their genitals as something that would help their partners that we're going to see to calm the sea down. So that has magical powers. <laughs> well, we should phone Emma Watson and Absolutely. tell her that. Next time she should That's refer to that. That's the next thing she should interview. do. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. The things I learned from you. Thank you so much. <laughs>